Wait for my gazebo. <laughs> right, so I've got a bunch of pieces of wood here, but I've got no idea what I'm actually going to make from them. I know I'm making boxes, but there's a lot of variations of boxes that you can make. And I have no idea what this material, I, like I can actually make from it and what material is gonna work best. So today's job is gonna be planning. I don't usually do it that often, but we're actually gonna plan some of this in order to get the most amount of yield from this material and hopefully get the best results. I've actually got no idea where I'm gonna start with this, like absolutely zero. I mean. I could just make it a simple dovetail box, which I think I'm going to do in a lot of cases. Just two contrasting bits of material, join them together, put a lid and a base on it, done. And that will allow me to get the job done quickly and get quite a lot of yield out of all this material. But I do want to do a few more that sort of show other techniques and, you know, maybe some with curved and shaped sides and things, maybe a bit of different joinery, I don't really know. So. What I'm going to do is start by singling out all the ones that I think could make some interesting designs and then with the material left over I'm going to make some simple boxes out of those. And for me there is no better source of inspiration than good old Pinterest. For those of you that don't follow me on there, give it a go, it's in the description. Dovetail box, boom, sorted. So there you go, there's some good things to get inspiration from. Obviously we won't copy things directly, it is just getting ideas, getting ideas floating, and then we'll uh, we'll see what comes of it. Oh, future projects right there. Yeah. Skip over that one. Right, then we'll just get scribbling. Right, so let's quickly go through all of this gibberish on these first few pages. I've spent about 25 minutes at the moment, essentially vomiting every single idea in my head or things that I could generate from Pinterest into three pages, four pages for that matter. As you can see, none of these are refined designs. They are basically just chuck it on a piece of paper, see how it looks, and then if it doesn't look good, move on to the next one. And if it does look good, maybe start progressing it a bit further. So for example, this is the first one that I drew. And to be honest, that is me, that's usually more polished than I would normally do, but there you go. That sort of a idea with curved sides and would be a good use for some of that brown oak that I've got using some pretty thick material. And then I sort of thought, eh, it looks a bit bulbous like that. So what if I just did the edges? So curve these ones straight front and back sorted. And then I just sort of moved that throughout the sketchbook as well. There's one here, which I really liked and I highlighted with pen. You see it's kind of curved on the front and back, but then the outside ones are curved internally. And then, I don't know, I think it gives this pretty cool look. And that's basically what I've been doing. It's just a mixture wait for that car to pass. It's just a mixture of shapes, none of which really make sense, but I've got some pretty cool inspiration to jump off now. Uh, another one would be this kind of design here where the sides actually protrude below the front and back, therefore giving it two feet to stand on. And I sort of mixed that with the curved design somewhere in here and started generating this one. So the sides actually sit below the front and back and they're actually curved on the outside as well as tapered because I mixed that with this design here which I actually generated from this design which is kind of like a Japanese influenced box which I got from Pinterest. So you can see just by quickly mixing stuff like this together and interlinking different ideas and seeing how it looks you can really quickly generate this sort of mood board of ideas. This one's bloody horrible. It looks like one of those, uh, is it the gymnastics things that you vault over? <laughs> it looks terrible, but I wouldn't have known it looked terrible until I drew it. I mean, maybe it'll look good in person, I don't know. And then what I found throughout drawing all of these is that I was actually struggling to consolidate the ideas of how the lid was going to actually work on some of these. So what I did, is on the fourth page, I gathered all of the drawings that I drew on these previous pages and grouped all the lid designs together onto one page so I could see how the design could change according to the lid. So this one is just a simple, assemble the whole box as one, then cut the lid off. You could obviously just lay the lid on top of the carcass. This one I really like, which is insetting the lid with a sort of pull on the front, which will be hinged at the back. 
This one, the lid's fully inset, so you just pull it up from above. Curved lid, maybe. I don't know if I have the patience for that one, but there we go. Um, a raised panel lid, which would be pretty cool. A sliding one and just a lid of contrasting material as well. So maybe two light pieces of wood and then a dark one in between or vice versa. And these are a mixture of both designs that affect the function of the box, i.e. how it's actually made. And then some of them are just purely design based, like this contrasting material one that can be applied to any of these, as well as the raised panel one that can be applied to a lot of these. But it's a mixture of functional and uh, aesthetic choices that I've grouped together on this page. I got the feeling I was sinking when drawing all that. Let's stay this. <laughs> There's holes all around this floor. So now with this mood board of ideas, oh, oh, there we go. With this mood board of ideas, now I'm going to start moving on to developing some of these into things that actually look like um, not fully fledged plans, but something that I could potentially look at and start working with because a lot of these are still quite rough and ready and might be difficult to picture as a finished box. So this is what we call the initial ideas phase where you just vomit all the ideas onto a piece of paper. And now we're going to move on to the developing phase where we get those ideas and start making them actually look like real life things and start mixing those ideas into more refined designs. brain is well and truly fried now but here's some more of the designs and they kind of make a little bit more sense now so we've got some here with tapered ends on them uh, some with tapered fronts and backs so it sort of changes the angles depending on which way you look at it uh, what we've got here we've also got some with curved sides on them and what's cool about this is every time you draw something wrong there is potential for it to cause inspiration for something else so for example this one here I kind of got the perspective of the curves wrong and then sort of realized actually it'd be pretty cool if I curved them sort of more towards the front of the box as opposed to like having it a consistent curve front to back. So that sort of sprung another idea. Thought about doing protruding dovetails for some of it. I don't really know uh, what else we got. Angled front and back with the sides sticking out from the bottom, thus giving it feet. This one I particularly like. It's got curved ends on it with the lid sort of protruding out the front and giving it a little lip to lift up. I think that would be one that I'd definitely go for. Some cool ideas here as well where I use a contrasting strip of wood in the center of the lid and then sort of shape a handle out of that to make it kind of naturally flow out the top of the box and then back in. And then, yeah, yeah, just done the random bits to be honest, but there's a lot of ideas here. So normally at this point, I would start taking more of these designs forward and applying dimensions and scales to them to, in order to get something that I could work to when it comes to machining. But seeing as most of this timber is pre-machined and pre-thicknessed, I have to work around the material that I've got as opposed to what I want to machine it to, if that makes any sense. So we're kind of doing this a little bit backward. In doing so, it means that I can't necessarily stick to any of these designs because you know it's all very well me planning out what material I want to use for some of these, but then it's, you know, I don't know what material what I'll have left over after making one box or how many boxes I'll be able to make from this design and then like it's quite difficult to fully plan it. So for now what I'm going to do instead is go through all of this timber and work out what timbers firstly complement each other i.e they're not going to clash they're not going to look tacky together and secondly what bits of timber will work best for certain components within these boxes because for example like the ones with the curved sides need slightly thicker ends on them and obviously some of this thinner material isn't going to be able to do that whereas the oak over there is going to be perfect for it uh, this orangey material here might be able to do it and that's the kind of thing I'm going to work out now and that will help me filter out which material can be used for which design and what I'll have an abundance of afterwards.
Right, so I found the best way to go about sussing out what material I wanted to use for each box was to actually group them into certain thicknesses. So we've got the really thin stuff here, which will work well for like the bases and thin sides of boxes. We've got these middle bits here, which will work really well for the carcasses. And then these thicker bits on the right, which will work well for the like curved designs and things like that. And that has allowed me to get some pretty cool combinations of material. So some of the combinations so far are, we've got sycamore curly quilted maple and this orange wood that I've got no idea what it is. We've got brown oak and this holly, which is gonna give a really nice like earthy style box. We've got red oak with an acacia lid. I reckon will be pretty cool. I mean, it kind of gives a rustic looking look. I think we got curly walnut with the spalted beech lid and potentially a base as well. Like, of course, that was going to happen. We got paduk, zebrano, and a smoke eucalyptus lid and base as well, which I think will be lovely. We got rosewood and tamo ash, which is stunning. I think I'm going to use the sapwood on the rosewood sort of to link up with the rest of the ash. Lovely veneer that. Got rippled sycamore and thoya burr avec grass stains. Quilted maple and curly walnut. Not too sure on this one, but we're going to give red oak and this um, exotic burr veneer a go together as well. Got sycamore and walnut burr for the lid. And then the remaining bits of acacia as well as the remaining bits of the holly as well for a proper rustic looking box. So that's all the combinations I want to commit to at this point before getting to carried away with committing to certain materials for certain boxes. So I've got it all listed on here as well as the thicknesses of the timber that I plan on using. So next we're going to go to the computer and I'm actually going to start drawing out some of these designs using the dimensions that I've listed here to work out which pieces of wood can be can work with which design.